All right, good morning. Welcome to our Encouraging Truth series. Glad you're joining us today. Uh, if you want to know more about our ministry, go online to womensbiblestudy.com. Uh, there you can find out everything you want to know about us. And uh, we are in the middle of a series called Encouraging Truth because we want you to wake up every Monday morning with something encouraging for you to hang on to during the week that's encouraging biblically. So that's how we started this whole thing. And so we are on encouraging truth number 53, which is this, you can make it through the storms in life if you are prepared. Because all through the Bible, people went through storms in their life. But for them, especially in the New Testament, it actually was literal storms. Um, the Sea of Galilee, it would start, you know, a storm would come upon there and then the, the sea would just go crazy and there would be waves and, and it would be kind of terrifying for them. But when storms would happen for the disciples when they were in the middle of the lake, it would, it would bring fear, it would bring anxiety, it would bring worry into their life. Like, what if our, our boat capsizes? Or what if I fall overboard in the middle and, and then I drown? What if the storm is so bad that we can't catch fish and then we can't feed our family? And, and see, it's just easy, whatever storm we're in in our life, to just kind of fall apart. Because when it comes to storms, we know this, we have no control over any of it. We usually have no control over the really bad storms that come into our life. We just saw this happen in Texas. We saw a storm that hit Texas that, here you go, nobody was prepared for. There was power grid failures, left millions without electricity, uh, no heat. It was freezing cold there. Water taps had run dry, pipes had burst, water treatment plants failed. And, and they had to actually boil all their water before they could even drink it. There were people who died. And we said, well, what, how could that happen? And here's why, because they weren't prepared for the storm. They weren't prepared. Now for most of us, our storms aren't actual weather-related storms, but they're more like this. Marriage storms. Like, I'm not getting along with my husband. I don't think he loves me anymore. We argue all the time. It could be health storms. The doctor just told me I have this. Or, oh my gosh, I just got COVID. Financial storms, I lost my job, I lost my paycheck, I'm, I'm about to lose my house, I don't have mo food, money for food. We have children's storms. My son is on drugs, my daughter is 14 and pregnant, my child is born autistic, uh, my kids won't talk to me. We have grandchildren's storms. My grandchildren don't want anything to do with God, that's a huge storm. How about doubt storms? I'm not really sure God is, God is really out there. I don't really know that he's listening or even cares about me. We have anger storms. I'm so angry with the situation. I'm so angry with how life is turning out. And all of these storms have the potential of pushing us farther and farther away from our relationship with Jesus. And the reason why is because we just aren't spiritually prepared for any of them. A lot of the problem is we've never built our spiritual foundation strong enough to withhold or withstand the storms that come into our life. It's like the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. It's a great example. One day it's going to fall. And the reason it's going to fall is because it was built on a faulty foundation to begin with. The 179-foot tower was built in 1173, but it's 17 feet out of plumb right now because every year it just starts going over a little more and a little more and a little more. And the problem was it was just never built on a proper foundation. And that's why. So because we know that, that, that we will have storms in our life and Jesus knew the disciples would have storms, he, he wants us to understand that we have to build our, our house or our life on a really strong spiritual foundation so that when these storms arise, then you know what, we're not gonna be blown away. We're not, it's not gonna topple us, it's not gonna crumble us down. But we have to take time. We have to take the time to build our house or our life on, on solid foundation, a foundation anchored to like a rock is how Jesus says. Because of our, 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 our life or our, our house is built on a, a strong anchored foundation that no matter how devastating the storm is that comes into our life, we're gonna make it through because we're anchored properly. Here's something else we see throughout the Bible. Sometimes God has to put us through really difficult storms because he knows a lot of times that is the only way he can get our attention. 
See, sometimes storms come into our life and everything else has been fine, so we don't turn to God. We don't even know if we have a strong spiritual foundation. And then something really bad happens in our life and it rocks, it rocks us to the core. But it shows us if in fact, do we really know God? And are we strong enough in our faith to withstand the storm? Matt Brown of Sandals Church tells of a guy who gave his life to Jesus. And you know why? It wasn't because things were going good in his life. It was because he lost his job. It was because of, he was accused of something that sent him to prison. He lost the love of his life. He lost everything. But he realized one day as he was listening to a, a, a sermon that came from Sandals Church, that he, he really needed Jesus. That's what he needed. Matt Brown says this, sometimes God has to wreck your life to save your soul. That's what sometimes storms do for us. Here's what we need to understand is that God cares about our storms because our storms are what really helps us determine, do I really trust God? Do I really have a true solid foundation? Do I have a true faith in Jesus? And storms do that for us in our life, so they're not really a bad thing. Jesus is saying that in order to make it through our life, we need to dig deep. We need to dig deep into the scriptures. We need to know that, that God can be trusted. We need to know him so well. See, we saw how powerful God is that he, you know, when Jesus calmed the raging sea of Galilee. But we have to know that in our own life. And the only way we know that is to be put into storms and turn around and trust God and, and see how big he is and what he can do for our storms. See, we need to know that no matter what comes into our life, that our spiritual house, we don't want it come crashing down. But what we need to know is that it won't if we have a strong spiritual foundation. Because what we begin to learn is this, that life is short and there's always going to be storms. But our faith is in the one true God who what? Who controls the storms. Our faith is in the one true God who controls the storm. And no matter what he allows into our life, we trust he knows what he's doing and he has a purpose for the storm. And we know that because we've opened the Bible. We've dug our foundation really deep and strong so that no matter what happens, we will not be blown over. Jesus says when we open the Bible and actually do what it says, look at what Luke 6.48 says. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against the house and could not shake it because it had been well built. See, nothing can shake us, nothing. Nothing will ever shake our faith when we've dug deep and we know God in a really, really strong personal way. This reminded me of a story that I shared many, it was quite a while ago, but I want to revisit it because um, this girl went through more storms than you and I will ever go through in her life. And yet her, her strong foundation of her faith was so good that nothing ever, ever destroyed her faith. Her name was Vanitha. She grew up crippled with polio in India. She spent the first 10 years of her life in and out of the hospital where she only saw her parents on the weekends. At seven years old, uh, kids would push her down. They would laugh at her. And she knew right then that life wasn't fair. And if there was a God, it was his fault. It was his fault that she had to go through all this horrible nightmare of what she had in her life. When she was in high school, she came in contact with Fellowship of Christian Athletes. She heard Salmon talk about how, how they lost their father. And yet this girl was saying she felt this unexplainable closeness to God even through the loss of her dad. Vanitha thought, you know, if God was there for that girl's time of need, she was confused as to why God wasn't there for her in her time of need. So one day she just stopped and she said, all right, God, if you're real, you need to show me. You need to show me. So the next morning she had a Bible. She picked it up, randomly just opened it. And this was where she opened it to, John 9, 1. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him and said, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. It was that verse that Vanitha learned that, that her, her being crippled wasn't God hating her or God's judgment against her or punishment. Instead, it was this reminder that he wanted to use her crippleness to point people to Jesus. See, and that was a complete game changer for Vanitha. 
She knelt by her bed. She gave her life to Christ. She was so excited about this new lease on life. And she just assumed that living for Jesus and letting him use her would just be so simple, so easy. But that didn't happen. Her 30-year marriage fell apart. Her two-month-old son died. And with that, this is what she said, no thanks, God. I'm fine without you. You aren't doing that great of a job with my life anyway. But when you build a strong foundation, you can get mad at God. You can say horrible things to him like, you're ridiculous and I don't like what you're doing. But here's what, what you need to know. Once you know Jesus, truly know him, you can try to walk away from him, but you can't. Because what happens is you become desperate. You become so desperate, and that's where Vanitha landed. She begged God to meet her in her misery, and then it got worse. Her husband of 18 years left her for another woman. She was single. She had polio. She had no one to help her. She had two teenage daughters at the time who were just kind of a disaster. And, and the question would be, how can God love me? How could God love me? But what she needed to do is something we all need to do, which is build a strong foundation, spiritual foundation on rock. She learned she had to do that. It's something you and I need to learn we have to do too. And so how she did that was every day she would open her Bible and, and God would give her something to hang on to, a verse, a word, a promise. And even though her life felt really tragic, Look what she says here. She says, I am still disabled. My body is getting weaker every day. My son died with no sudden healing. My husband left and eventually divorced. To some, it may seem that God did not answer my prayers and that my encounter with Jesus left me unchanged. And yet I know with each answer of no, God was doing something deeper in my life. There is no lasting peace or contentment apart from Jesus. She said, of course, she never would have chosen like all of this suffering. But even through her suffering, she continued to build up her spiritual life on a solid foundation, the solid foundation of the Word of God. And then she said something I'll never forget. She said, when my life was easy, God was per peripheral to me. My faith was important in theory, but God often feels absent from everyday life. In my losses, I needed God every day. I needed his comfort, his wisdom, his presence. I needed God to give me the strength because I had nothing left. See, some of you are going through imagine, unimaginable things right now. And I want to give you hope today. I want to just say, you don't, I don't want you to lose hope, okay? That's what I'm hoping for you today. I want you to know this. Your circumstances may never change, but you will. And you will change as you build your spiritual foundation on solid rock. That's how you change. That's how you make it to where nothing can ever mess with your faith because you're so strong and you've built your faith on a very strong foundation. And how that happens, really, honestly, is just by reading your Bible. We say that all the time here. Um, rock builders hear his word and they conform their lives to it. That's what happens. You conform your life to what the Bible tells you instead of conforming your life to everything else. When God tells people to do something in his word, you know what we do? We do it. When God says to avoid something, then we avoid it. See, rock builders are people who hear the word, read the word, listen to the word, and then they make the word of God their foundation in their life. Verse 41 says this, but the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. I was talking to a guy one day, and I have an illustration of how, how this works. You've, you've built your life on sand, spiritual sand, and then when something bad happens, your faith crumbles, versus you built your house on a solid foundation, and your house still stands. So I was talking to this guy one day about his mom. His mom had gone into an assisted living home, and towards the latter part of her life, she started going to church and going to Bible studies, and and, and she would, you know, help the homeless. And she was doing really good, but then she ended up in this assisted living. And I asked how she was doing, and, and he said, she's so stubborn, and she has no joy in her life. And he said, one day I asked her, do you not remember, Mom, anything that you learned at Bible study? Do you not remember anything you learned from the, from the Bible? 
And I think the answer probably was no. Because she showed up to church or Bible study, she heard some verses, but here you go, she never let it sink in and build a strong spiritual foundation. It never happened. So when things got bad and she ended up in an assisted living home and she got angry with God and bitter, she never had anything to hang on to. This guy I was talking to told me about a woman who was 102 years old at his church. And she was the most joyful, loving, welcoming person he'd ever met. And he said the contrast between his mom and this 102-year-old woman was just light years apart. Because one read her Bible and she was prepared to get older. She was prepared to be joyful in any season of her life. But the other one, his mom never got it. See, his mom is ending her life miserable and mean and on this, this shaking ground because she just never had a solid foundation of the Bible. And this is why, because she never deposited God's word in her mind, so the Holy Spirit could never bring to her mind what wasn't there. She just couldn't, nothing was there. And that's why I say we got to get into the word now and figure out how to build our faith so strong so that nothing ever, ever comes into our life that destroys our faith. See, loving others and being joyful and being patient and being loving, you know, it, it doesn't just happen when you're 30 or 50 or 70. Like you can still have those love, joy, peace, patience, kindness traits when you're 102. But to make it through to 102 with those kind of spirit-filled things going on in your life, it's because you built your foundation on a solid rock. That's why. See, we're all getting older. So we have to go, what have I built my life on? And hopefully it's the, the foundation of, of the Bible, the Word of God. So knowing that, what are we doing? What are we building our life on? Because the man who builds his life on sand, there was little or no preparation. Sand is just unstable. And someone who builds their life on sand, it's kind of like, you're just trying to do everything yourself. You just follow the shifting sands of philosophy or the culture or religious activity. If you, if you lived your life on a, or built your life on sand, it's kind of like, you just, you believe in God on your own terms. You don't, you don't read your Bible. There's nothing solid to hang on to. If you're a sand builder, you know what your life is really all about. It's all about you. You just kind of go along with the crowd. See, you're self-sufficient. You can handle anything that comes along your way. You don't need God. But the problem is, is that someday a storm is going to come into your life. It could be a tragedy, a loss, a divorce, a financial ruin, I don't know. And you realize for the first time in your life you have no idea what to do. You're not prepared emotionally, you're not prepared financially, and you're clearly not prepared spiritually. You look around and you go, what just happened? Was this a random fate of like the universe? And your life comes crumbling down. But that same storm hitting someone who has built their house on a strong spiritual foundation, they have the Holy Spirit to comfort them. They have the knowledge that God is in control. They have the realization that no matter whatever happens in their life, God has a purpose. See, you can weather a storm because your faith is not built on what just randomly happens in this world. Your faith is built on the one true God who we know will give us anything we need and everything we need to go through any storm in life. See, when you come out of a storm, just like the disciples came out of the storm when Jesus calmed the raging sea, you know what happened? They knew him better and they trusted him more. Just like Vanitha, who was crippled with polio, she realized God wanted to use her story to point other people to Jesus because he is the only way to God. She knew this no matter how many storms came into her life. She wasn't living for this, what was here on this earth. She knew that there would be a future when one day she would die and she would not have polio anymore. And she would eventually get a brand new body. And that was what she focused on, not on the here and now. So it all starts by giving your life to Jesus. If you've never done that, I hope today's the day where you say, Jesus, come in my life. I'm going to live for you. You open the Bible. You do what it says. You start building a very, uh, a very strong spiritual foundation. Don't waste any more of your time. Don't waste any more of your time because just like Texas, a storm can come up 
come upon us without any warning at all. And if you're not spiritually prepared, your life just may crumble beneath the weight of it. So we don't want that to happen today. So just know this. What is our encouraging truth for today, which I have to go back here, is this. You can make it through the storms in life if you are prepared. So let's get prepared. Hope you have a really good day. Thank you.